How did France, known for the Eiffel Tower and the Palace of Versailles, become the nation it is today? Greetings everyone today we will unravel the history of France. From the Roman conquests, the rise and fall of empires, the Hundred Years' War, the Reformation, the Napoleonic Era, the World Wars, and the creation of the European Union. If you find this video interesting, please support us by hitting the like button. Now, let's get started. Before France became a nation, a people called the Celts lived in the land of France. The Celts gradually developed their own culture. However, in the first century BC, the Roman Empire, the dominant power in Europe at the time, invaded France. Celts could not defeat the Romans, who had overwhelming military power, and the Romans took over the French lands. Later, in the fourth century, the Roman Empire became too large and was divided into two empires the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. And the French lands were ruled by the Western Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire extended its territory throughout Western Europe and even into Northern Africa. But it was destroyed by the Germanic tribes. After the destruction of the Western Roman Empire, the Germanic tribes, who had grown stronger and more powerful, began to establish new states in Western Europe. However, the Frankish Empire, which had grown too large, was divided into three kingdoms, just as the Roman Empire had been in the past. The Frankish Kingdom was divided into three kingdoms. The Western Frankish Kingdom, the Eastern Frankish Kingdom, and the Central Frankish Kingdom. These three kingdoms became the prototypes of today's France, Germany, and Italy. In 1337, a great and incredibly long war broke out that shook France and England, as well as all of Europe. It was the 100 Years' War. This war can be divided into two major phases. The key figures of the first phase were Philip VI and Jean II from France, and Edward III, and Edward the Black Prince from England. Both waged fierce wars, taking territory from each other, and engaging in offensive and defensive battles. However, a nasty disease came to Europe that temporarily interrupted this fierce war between England and France. It was the plague. The plague, also known as the Black Death, was a disease with an overwhelming mortality rate that spread throughout Europe in the 14th century. It is said that one-third of the population of France died from the plague. The effects of the plague weakened both France and England, and they were no longer in a position to fight. This situation led to growing discontent within France which led to large-scale peasant uprisings, such as the Jacquerie Rebellion. In the 15th century, however, England resumed its invasion of France. This would mark the beginning of the second phase of the 100 Years' War. The protagonists of the second phase were Charles VI, King of France, and Henry V, King of England. The second phase was overwhelmingly dominated by England with the son of Henri V temporarily ascending to the throne of France. The One Hundred Years' War saw the English come very close to gaining all of France. But it ultimately ended in victory for the French. Thanks to the heroics of Jeanne d'Arc. Jeanne d'Arc claimed to have received a revelation from God, and began to display her power. With her inspiring presence, she boosted the morale of the French army, leading to a breakthrough against the English besieging Orleans. This gave the French the upper hand, and the English eventually withdrew from France. With this, the Hundred Years' War, which lasted for about 100 years, ended with a French victory. After the end of the Hundred Years' War, between France and England, in the 16th century, the Reformation was taking place in Europe as a whole, especially in Germany. The Reformation began with Martin Luther's criticism of the Catholic Church, and gave birth to a new sect. Protestantism. Following Luther, a man named Calvin also created a new doctrine in Switzerland. Calvin's teachings became quite popular in France. And French people who believed in Calvin's teachings became known as Huguenots. As the number of Huguenots increased in France, the Catholic Church could no longer tolerate them. Tensions between the Huguenots and Catholics gradually increased. And a major war broke out in France. This was the Huguenot War. The king took various measures to stop the war. But none of them worked, and the war grew more and more heated. In the midst of the war, tens of thousands of Huguenots were massacred. After this incident, 
France was plunged into a state of confusion and unrest. However, a king was born to bring this situation under control. That king was Henri IV. Although he was a Calvinist and a Huguenot, he converted to Catholicism and issued the Royal Decree of Nantes, which recognized the Huguenot religion. With these skillful policies, Henri IV succeeded in winning the support of both Catholics and Huguenots. And ending the Huguenot Wars. With the end of the Huguenot Wars and the accession of Louis XIV. As the new King of France in the 17th century, the era of absolute monarchy began. Under Louis XIV, France entered an era of absolute monarchy. A system where the king held centralized and unchecked power. Louis XIV's words, I am the state, became an assertion of absolute monarchy at that time. However, in the 18th century, a major event occurred in France that brought down this absolute monarchy. This was the French Revolution. The French Revolution was one of the most important events in the entire history of Europe. And it was a revolution that would change society forever. During the French Revolution, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were publicly executed by guillotine in 1793. This marked the end of the French monarchy and the birth of a new republican society. However, republican France was by no means stable, and amidst the societal turmoil, a charismatic figure, Napoleon, emerged. With the advent of Napoleon, France went from being in a state of ruin to quickly gaining hegemony in Europe. Napoleon staged a coup d'état, overthrew the French government of the time, and established a new government. Furthermore, Napoleon subsequently demonstrated his charisma and gained overwhelming support from the people. Rising to the rank of emperor, various coalitions, seeing Napoleon as a threat, were formed against him throughout his campaigns. Napoleon, a brilliant strategist, won most of the wars. Expanding the territory of France and establishing near absolute control over most of Western Europe. However, Napoleon was to face a turning point. Napoleon fought against Russia with 400,000 men, but was defeated, and this defeat led to Napoleon's weakening of his power. In a subsequent battle against the Allied armies of Europe, Napoleon was again defeated, thus marking the end of his glory. After Napoleon's death, the Congress of Vienna was held to clean up the mess that Napoleon had made of Europe. At the Congress of Vienna, it was decided to basically restore the European system to the way it was before the French Revolution. This would bring back the monarchy in France, and an era in which the king would once again rule the country. However, the people of France, who had once successfully led the revolution, would not sit idly by and watch the monarchy return to power. The people once again led a revolution that led to the abolition of the monarchy. And it was Napoleon III, Napoleon's nephew, who won the support of the people. Napoleon III, like Napoleon, was a man of strategy. And his successes in various foreign wars helped to solidify France's position in Europe. In 1870, Napoleon III was defeated in the war against Prussia and subsequently captured, leading to the collapse of the French government. In 1914, the assassination of the heir to the Austrian throne led to the outbreak of World War I. France, wanting to retaliate against Germany, of course joined this war. World War I, unparalleled in its scale at the time, was fought between the Allies, led by Great Britain, France, and Russia, and the Central Powers, led by Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. France fought fiercely on the Western Front. In the battle against Germany, French troops fought hard and succeeded in halting the German advance. The Great War was later won by the Allied forces. With the full-scale entry of the United States into the war. With the end of World War I, there was a temporary period of peace. However, the peace would not last long. The Great Depression broke out and a period of global recession followed, France and Great Britain, which had a large number of colonies, managed to overcome the difficulties by trading between themselves and their colonies. In 1940, using rapid offensive tactics, Germany launched a military invasion and swiftly penetrated the interior of France. France was unable to respond to this tactic, and as a result, Germany took most of the French territory and it fell under German control. 
However, there was a French general who continued to resist the Germans. That general was General de Gaulle. After France was occupied by Germany, General de Gaulle went into exile in England. He then set up a government in exile called Free France to oppose Germany in London, England. Under General de Gaulle's leadership, Free France gradually gained strength. In 1944, the pivotal Normandy landings, spearheaded by the United Kingdom and the United States, took place. The Allied forces deployed large numbers of troops into the German control area of Normandy in northern France, and the Allied forces advanced further and further into the interior of France. Finally, in August 1944, they succeeded in liberating Paris from Germany. After that, Free France under de Gaulle's leadership was recognized as the official government of France, and France succeeded in completely regaining power from Germany. The Normandy landings in 1944 marked a significant turning point. While they paved the way for the eventual Allied victory in Europe, World War II continued until 1945. In the post-war era, France faced instability due to colonial issues and internal political conflicts. At the same time, France played a leading role in the establishment of the organization. That would become the forerunner of the European Union and became a major force in Europe. From post-war challenges to its role in the European Union, France has continued to evolve, leading us to the vibrant and diverse nation we know today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.